So in this episode I am going to show you how to depower this power steering rack. I am swapping motors here on the Mazda Mero. And with the motor out, it's easy to get to the power steering. So I am removing the power steering. It's going to lighten it up, make less of a mess. So, so I've seen some other videos on this and I just wanted to show this one because it's a little bit different. Um, uh, some people say that you need to tear all this apart to get get the seal that rotates back and forth in here, and you really don't need to do that. Um, the way you know power steering works is it you know the, is it there's a seal in here and it pumps in fluid on one side, which pushes it this way, and then it pumps it in on the other side, which pushes it back this way. So there's a seal right here in the middle and on the ends to keep the pre the fluid pressurized sealed up in there and and um, but all you really need to do is 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 put a loop between these these two things but first of all you have to take the power steering fluid out because the difficulty in in moving this thing back and forth is forcing the fluid back and forth so you don't want to leave fluid in here you do just a little bit just enough to provide some lubrication and then you just loop it so the air is basically going back and forth not the fluid and you can see if I you can see eh, I can't do it with one hand but you can just pull this slide this thing back and forth uh, by your hand there's no resistance at all I mean now that I have I have the the pinion uh, uh, adjuster out so there's no no uh, pressure on the pinion you can just pull this I can't do it with one hand so I can't do it with one hand but it's really easy to do it with two hands so it really just I mean you can see there we go it just it's it doesn't the seal in there does not provide any resistance whatsoever so you don't need to remove it and I you know I tried to I started to try and do it and you know the the, the the nut back here is just not going to come off. I'm going to, and there's no need to make it come off. So you don't even need to undo any of this. All you need to do is undo these. Let's the, let the get the fluid out of there, most of it, almost all of it. And um, so now the next step is to remove is to remove the the uh, the shaft in here and take out the uh, the the stress. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but basically, when you when you it, when it senses uh, the pressure on one side, then it redirects the fluid to one of the others. So you need to take that valve out of there because it provides some some play. There's some movement that it has to occur before before uh, it switches the the pump uh, output, and so you really don't want to have any play in it. Oh, it's not very much but you might as well fix it. So, it should just come out with a snap ring. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so we got, got the shaft out. In order to get that out, I had to take the, uh, the back side. Um, there's this cover. And then there's a nut. So this nut, this nut goes on the back. So you gotta take that nut off. And then, and then just, you know, tap on the center of the shaft and it pops right out. I, I just undid that now with, with this tool, which this episode is brought to you by the battery-powered impact tool. This thing's an awesome tool. Everyone should have one. You know, it uses the uh, same Ryobi batteries I got from my other crap. And uh, it really is, you should have, everyone should have one of these in their toolbox. So yeah, I got it out, and then you got to take this snap ring off to get to get the director for the fluid. So let me do that. Try not to get my camera all greasy here. So. All right, so I got the got the snap ring off, and it surely helps to have the right tool because that one I could actually switch it over from the inner valve, but this didn't quite fit just right. It was a pain to get it off. This one got the out. 
Got the other one off really easy, you know, this one. But, uh, just the tips are not the right size. Anyway, so I got this one off finally, but um, it's got a pin right here. So this pin is holding, holding this collar onto this shaft, this half of the shaft. And so I'm going to have to just grind it off, it looks like. So I don't know, maybe we should bring this episode should be brought to you by this tool, which is the battery powered four and a half inch grinding wheel. I don't know. Now I'm thinking maybe that one because that's what I used to grind this off with. And you can see I really just sort of ground the end of it so it would push off the pin. And now that you look at this, you can see how this works. It basically, the input from the steering column is connected by this pin to this shaft, and this shaft twists. It's like a torsion bar, and it and it will uh, it will move. I mean, this the outer piece will stay. It will move with the with the, with the steering input, but the inner shaft is not going to move it's going to twist down here and so it's going it's going to connect these different ports so it's going to it's going to slide over and connect to the different ports down here anyway so you can see that this this, the, uh, this piece is not connected to this piece so you could just pin it um, through a hole in it, but I'm just going to weld it since I have a welder. If you didn't have a welder, you could probably, well, it's pretty, you could probably just drill a hole in here and have it go right through that pin so the pin doesn't move. But I'm just going to weld it. So that's the next step. So well, there we go, just uh, still a little bit hot. But just tack it on each side, just a little weld, you don't need to go crazy here. You're gonna, you don't wanna you don't wanna warp the shaft in any significant amount. So basically now you just uh, you just put it back together. So you just use some wheel bearing grease or something and put it on the on the uh, you know put it on the on the, what is that? A, it's a pinion. Yeah, put it on the, the pinion or the rack, and uh, and just put it back in there. I mean, the bearings, the bearing is for the bottom rides right here, and the top bearing is right here, and it rides right there. It's still a lot. So, yeah, you just put it back in there and put the bearings back in. Put some grease on on here, and then you're gonna have to put. Put the, uh, you know, and then tighten that nut back up. And then I've got the, the rest of the, here's the, the rest of the stuff to put back in to, to tighten this. So I would put some grease on this too and put that back in there. Just put it back together. Stop it there. And, and you're good to go. You know, cost uh, basically nothing, except time, and, uh, and of course you have to have a welder to make it a lot easier. So I got the got the shaft in there, put, put a bunch of grease on the thing. You know. Okay, so it's all back together, but there's just one last thing, and that is you need, you've got these fitting holes in here. And they make plugs, they just screw in, there's no pressure or anything. All you need to do is just plug it up to keep dirt from getting in. Nothing here is going to come out. So, I'm just, you know, you, some people, uh, you can take these fittings and cut them off and weld them shut to buy the plugs. But I'm just going to fill them full. You know, I've got this 
still a ton of stuff at the 99 cent store today, so dollar. I'm just gonna goop it in there because that weighs a lot less, you know. Because it's a race car. You don't want to have an extra three ounces in here. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna goop some of that in there. It should dry quickly. And I'm putting it back in the car. There you go. Just put on some silicone. Some of that silicone. Yeah, because that looks racy. It's better than having stuff sticking out with welds all over it. Alright. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.